President Biden has offered his full backing to Ukraine, saying any incursion by Russian forces massed on its border would constitute an unacceptable invasion. He says there would be a severe and coordinated economic response from the West, and that retaliation has been laid out very clearly for President Putin. The comments come on the eve of fresh talks in Geneva between the US and Russia to try to reduce tensions. Meanwhile, the first members of a 30-strong British military team have arrived in Ukraine to help train local forces in the use of anti-tank weapons. Boris Johnson says any Russian incursion would be a disaster for both countries and the world. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale has the latest from Geneva. It's not just the Russians who are conducting military exercises. These are pictures released by Ukraine's defence ministry, showing their forces training close to Crimea that was annexed by Russia in 2014 and the kind of incursion that Ukraine and its allies are trying to deter once again. I've been absolutely clear with President Putin. He has no misunderstanding. If any, any assembled Russian units move across the Ukrainian border, that is an invasion. But it will be met with severe and coordinated economic response in some of the most intensive American diplomacy for years, the US Secretary of State has been touring Western capitals. He was in Berlin today, rallying support for Ukraine and appealing directly to the people of Russia. You deserve to live with security and dignity. But what really risks your security is a pointless war with your neighbors in Ukraine. Western allies are threatening Russia with massive economic sanctions if there's any invasion. Behind the scenes, there are differences over what those penalties should be, but the public message is united. We are in absolutely close coordination with regard to joint sanctions because we have an absolutely joint assessment of the situation, but also of the reactions with regard to the security of Ukraine. This also applies to sanctions. Fresh satellite images appear to show how Russia has massed not just troops near Ukraine, but also military equipment. From Klimovo to the north, to Soloty on Ukraine's eastern border, and Novozanoya to the south near Crimea. The diplomacy now moves to Geneva, where Mr Blinken arrived for talks with his Russian counterpart on Friday. But the discussions at this hotel tomorrow may be difficult because the gap between both sides is so large. The Americans want to talk about avoiding war in Ukraine, but the Russians want to talk about their demands for NATO to step back and allow Moscow to establish a new sphere of influence across Eastern Europe. In Eastern Ukraine, they know what that might mean. Pro-Russian separatists have been fighting government forces here since 2014, and the scars are all to see. Antonina Zaitseva is 72 years old and lives close to the front line. It's a miracle we stayed alive, she says. We could have died many times. She's pro-Russian and fears a full-scale war. Russia denies that is its intention, but its forces are training hard close to Ukraine. The question now is whether all these exercises might soon become the real thing. Well, James, what hope of a breakthrough in tomorrow's talks between the US and Russia where you are? Well, Clive, I don't think there's any great hope of some grand breakthrough tomorrow. The gap between both sides remains large. No new proposals have been flagged up in advance and there seems little movement on the fundamentals. But there are some positive notes out there. Just, I think, the simple fact that the Western alliance is just about managing to maintain its united front in the threat of uh, sanctions to try to deter Russian action, that is being held together by an awful lot of diplomacy on all sides. Boris Johnson spoke to his German counterpart this evening, just as British forces, a small group, were arriving in uh, Ukraine to help train with some new anti-tank missiles that uh, the UK has delivered. And that said, there's also this point. The fact that these talks are taking place tomorrow uh, has is raised some eyebrows and has been seen by some as a good sign. They've been thrown together at the last minute. They were only agreed a couple of days ago. Last week, many people were saying the diplomat diplomatic route is over. Well, not quite. And I think the hope is that tomorrow, you know, Antony Blinken and his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, 
uh, haven't met for some time, but since well before Christmas. They've got a lot to talk about. And the hope is that while the talking continues, at least the prospect is, the hope is, that maybe the fighting is a little bit more distant. OK, James, thank you. James Landau there, live in Geneva.